So we moved in the house. We love our new house, by the way. Uh, we found out that it takes an awful long time for hot water to get to the sink because our water heater is on the other corner of the house. Now it's a on-demand heater, so it only heats up when water starts to flow. Now I don't have flow right now because I have the pipes underneath disconnected, uh, but we timed it and it took a minute and 40 seconds for hot water to start pouring out of this faucet. Now that's a long time. And if you've got a you know two and a half, three gallon per minute flow, that's, that's about five gallons of wasted water. So we looked at various solutions on solving this that would be cost effective. Now we thought that we could use a, a, a recircling pump out at the water heater. And so we got one in, we installed it, and nothing on the, on the sales page or in the instructions said until I found an, a, a very um, hard to find instruction on their website that said, it could not be used with an on-demand water heater, a tankless water heater, uh, because the valve that's underneath the sink that triggers the flow of hot water trickles too slowly to trigger the flow on the tankless water heater. Now, the tankless water heater we have does make a, a recirculating pump, but it's about five or $600 plus installation. So when I was searching Amazon, I found another solution that we're gonna tr try out today and see if it works. And what it does is it is a, uh, it is a little box that hangs underneath the sink here. And when the temperature uh, goes below a certain level, it opens up between the hot water line and the cold line, thereby drawing enough water from the tankless water heater. And this one did say on its website, it works for a tankless water heater. Now the key is though that it takes a power supply. So you, you have to have a power outlet underneath your sink, which we have one. Um, and then this is the box that, uh, oh, it's got some kind of suction cup on the back or something here to hang it. I don't know how that, well, we'll, we'll read about that. But anyway, so uh, we have to hook the power here and then there's T's here for the flow of the water. And these are the brass T's that are connect here and here. Um, there's some extra washers. Good. And the, the other T. And then also in the box are the hoses, the extra hoses, because you only have one hose underneath there going from the faucet to the cutoff. So you need another one to go on the other side of the T here. So we're going to open this these up, which is the inlet, inlet, uh, oh, this is the hot water inlet down here, this is the cold water outlet down here. So there's a gasket right in there, so we're going to put this T under this one. Oop. Got a small little filter in there. <clears throat> I might have a wrench outside that'll fit that, but we'll just use a, ch a pair of channel locks for now. I don't want this to cross over this power supply, so I need to keep it offset a little bit. Okay. No. And they had a various lengths. They had 12 inch, 15 inch. I think they actually had 24 inch. I'm not sure, but I went ahead and got the 15 because I wanted plenty of room to place this box where it needed to go. And I'm going to cut off this tag. in the way. All right. So I guess it just doesn't matter which way. Wait, which, which end do I do? There 
I guess I do that end of the T. Yep. Um, so I went ahead and hooked up the power unit because I've got an extra power outlet in the back on the incinerate on sinkerator control um, that provides power to the garbage disposal. It also provides an extra outlet, and we're pretty lucky. We have two outlets down here: one which powers the garbage disposal, and one for the dishwasher. Now I could put a you know a, a plug there that could hold you know, up to six outlets or something like that. So, you know, as long as you have one outlet underneath your sink, you can make that work. Now, the problem that I have is that everything on this sink is 3 8 inch, but everything here is half. Now, the good thing is that this has a built-in adapter. So, that works perfect for getting up to the cutoff valve. But, from, the, from the, this to the faucet, I've had to come up with two other adapters. And so we're going to need those adapters here. And here. Stick that box on the wall right there. That would be handy because that would work. But we're going to hook it up and make sure it works when we do that. Okay, so we've got that. Got both those adapters off. One's going to go up here to the cold water supply. This is always a hard one to get to. That's why I wanted 15 inches. I didn't check to see if that had a gasket in it. Let me make sure of that first. Yes, it does. Okay, good. Oh, I have to use some Teflon tape on this. this stopper that goes into this pressure tank that's sitting behind me over here for the uh, water filtration system. I know I should have a box wrench this size, but I don't. I don't know what happened to it, but I didn't discover I didn't have it until I started doing this. So, okay, um, let's look at the hot water. water supply to the faucet so this is going to go in the cold water tea at the top and the hot water 
goes the hot water tea at the bottom. gonna fit right perfect right there all right how to set this up get the power supply plugged in there oh it's already pumping water wow now it's in Celsius all right, um, press the set button and the temperature symbol flashes in your temperature setting. Press up or down so it's in Celsius. Great! <laughs> Should we set to Fahrenheit? I guess not. All right, so um, it set it, so I have to figure out. So while Cindy was getting her phone and we were trying to figure out what Celsius is in Fahrenheit, this little pump ran until it cut off at 42 degrees Celsius. Now that's roughly about 6 degrees Celsius less than the water heater outlet, which at 120 degrees is 48 degrees Celsius. And they said to recommend to set this at 5 degrees lower in Celsius than the water heater outlet temperature. So that's what we have. Um, now to set the constant temperature mode, press the set button, um, press it to just on or off, okay. No, not that. Okay, so it's on. Oh, now the time. Yeah, that's the time. And the time right now is 15.44. Because I believe what we can do, and I'm not going to do it right now, but I think we can set this, yeah, so we can set a schedule. Uh, let's see. We do. We have hot water within three seconds. That is remarkable. Holy cow. Wow. Well, I'm duly impressed with this little unit. I forget how much it cost. Um, I'll have it in the comments of this video where, uh, with a link to, the, to, you, uh, to Amazon where you can uh, look at the price and see if it fits for you, but oh my gosh, this was this is remarkable That it works so well so easily. Uh, I know it was less expensive than the outdoor unit that we got I, I'm thinking it was I Don't know. I don't know what to say. Okay, so let me get this sticker on here. See if I can hang this uh, Where it needs to go so we get off the floor and then I'm gonna wind up this cord and twist tied up because I'm a neat freak if you haven't already figured that out already oh okay so I'll peel off the tape on the back here easier said than done make sure that's on there really good and then you just hang it on there bada bing bada boom and and I could hear it when it was running uh, but it wasn't awfully loud so I guess it is pumping it's not just a, a
passive valve. Give me that twist out there, babe. It's right up on the cutting board. Thank you. And there we are. We have it all. Ready.